Welcome to your first lecture series. I'm so glad that you're joining me this semester. Well, I just wanted to give you a quick overview of what to expect. Every week you'll be provided a YouTube playlist. It'll have all of the videos that you need to watch for the week. Sometimes I'll add in some extra ones if you need extra content or you're interested in a subject. Each one of those videos is gonna usually be a combination of footage of me, sometimes other video, and sometimes PowerPoint slides. My goal is to make sure that you're not getting bored. I know sometimes just listening to someone talk over the top of a PowerPoint slide isn't always the best. Now, the other thing I want you to note is that every single video has an MP3 file, so you can just listen to it. Every single video has an MP4 or a video version, and you'll have closed captioning or transcripts to each video if you need that as well. Additionally, I also have my PowerPoint slides posted, so if you just would like to read material, you have that option available to you as well. So, let's get started. So hopefully by now you know that this is the Animal Science 101 course, and I'm Kate Moore, and I am so excited that you're going to be joining me this semester. Now, before you continue watching this video, I just want to make sure that you've already taken a look at the syllabus. These were sent out to you. If you haven't, Stop right here, go take a look at both of those, get your quizzes done first, and then come back to this video. Otherwise, some of this stuff might be a little confusing. Now, one of the things that constantly gets asked in this class is why is this so much more intense than just like a basic English 101 class or a basic communications class? And I wanna make sure we just talk about kind of the pace of my course and how it works and that there's just a lot of content in the animal science industry and more often than not in the science industries themselves. This class covers everything from chemistry to biology, physiology, anatomy, basic production skills, and a lot of students come into my classroom with varying degrees of engagement with this topic. Some students have lived on ranches their whole life, and some students, you're from urban areas. This is brand new. You're just starting to scratch the surface of your interest in this subject. So it's important to understand that for some, this class may feel too slow. For some, this class may feel really intense and fast paced. And really this class is more similar to something like a chemistry 107, where you're kind of just heading straight into the subject. It's a science class. There's a lot of studying, a lot of math, a lot of complicated material, because we're working with systems of animals from various species. And there's gonna be differences and similarities, and we're trying to start to build that foundation for our program, or give you a good enough overview that you can move into another industry, like ag business, or plant science and feel like you have at least an adequate overview of what this side of agriculture does. So if you're feeling like this class feels a little more intense than some of my other GE classes, you're right, it does. And that's pretty normal. So don't feel like, oh gosh, I shouldn't be here. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, it's really just the subject material that we have to get you through. And previous semesters, I've decided to start taking surveys to really ask students, what were some of the things that helped you pass this class, that helped you engage in the material? And you're going to see a lot of different feedback. So some students are going to say, go to class. Now that might be a little bit harder this semester because we're doing things differently. Some students, um, you know, said, don't procrastinate on quizzes. You have to be able to study for them, otherwise you can't pass them. And that doesn't mean cramming the night before or hours before your quiz, but really taking time to go over the material pretty regularly. A lot of students are saying, show up. Make sure you're engaged with the material. Make sure that you're going and asking, you know, for help, for review, working through your notes, and really making sure to check in. Okay, that you're not missing material, that you're keeping up with the class, and taking notes in a way that's beneficial for you. Some students taking word-by-word -word notes is more helpful. Some students' diagrams are more helpful. Some students need to read the material. So really finding that pathway that's helpful for you with this material and so that it makes sense. You're not just sitting there wasting your time using a study habit or a note-taking habit that's actually not productive for you. And this would be my advice. So when it comes to any science, specifically animal science, since that's my specialty, um, I want to just really quickly clarify some things. So when it comes to the brain, the brain actually requires a very different skill set to learn math and science. It's why you often hear people say, I'm not good at math, I'm not good at science. And really what it is is that they haven't gotten the tools yet in order to take that information in, be able to translate it, understand it, and then apply it. And that's really normal. So if you come to this class thinking, I failed a chemistry, I'm not good at this, I'm not good at that, don't stress, don't worry. That's something you can learn. It's not something you're just bad at and it never gets better. 
The other thing that's really helpful um, to know about math and science is that oftentimes our brain will tell us, yeah, 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 I know this information, we're good. But what it's actually doing is just saying, I'm familiar with the information, but then when you get to a test, I don't actually know how to replicate it or remember it. And so becoming familiar with material in my class can sometimes be a pitfall because then you get to a quiz or you get to an assignment and you go, I actually don't know how to do this. And some things that really help prevent that are chunking materials. So taking small subjects at a time and breaking them apart and putting them into a study method that makes sense for you. So if it's videos, if it's auditory, if it's visual, if it's diagrams, whatever it is that actually helps you learn, that's what I want you to do. And that's going to look different for every student. So don't feel like the person next to me has 500 flashcards, they're color coded, great, I'm failing. No, that's probably what works for that student. That might not be you. The other thing I want you to really pay attention to is procrastination. So one of the things that we tend to do um, is walk into college with old study habits, old school habits. We procrastinate. We wait. It's painful. I don't want to do it. Studying's hard. I haven't been successful. There's all sorts of cultural and philosophical beliefs that we move into college with. And really helpful to start understanding how do I set myself up for success if I didn't do well in high school? Or if I did, how do I bring those habits and make them even more productive here in the college environment? So really starting to ask yourself, how do I learn? How does this work? And then really understanding that when it comes to specifically Animal Science 101, this class is not easy. It is considered a foundational class for our program. My job is to make sure that regardless of your background, regardless of your level of expertise, that you leave my classroom with a certain skill set that you are going to absolutely 100% need for the rest of our program. And it's really important that you apply things like studying, taking notes, showing up to class, asking questions, and preparing yourself. And understanding that I'm a professor that loves questions. If something's not working for you, don't sit there and feel dumb or feel like, no, she doesn't care. No, no, stop me and we'll work through that. I'll make sure I say it in a different way so that it makes more sense. So always, always be willing and ready to come to me if there's something that's not making sense. And then additionally, the other thing I want you to pay attention to is, you know, there's really this idea that brains work very well focused, but they also work really well when they're sleeping. And one of the best things you can do to retain material and work through problems is actually sometimes to take a break, take a nap, eat some food, go for a walk and give your brain this passive break where it can just kind of work on that problem in the background so that you can then come back to the subject intensely focused and it actually helps your brain understand and work through the problem a little more efficiently rather than just sitting there for two hours and struggling through something. Can I succeed in this course? Yes, you can. So believe it or not, um, this is data even from coronavirus, which is pretty crazy because that was a really brutal semester that we had spring of 2020. You can succeed in this class. Over 75% of my students passed with a C or better last semester. If we count in Ds, it was about 83%. So understanding that you can pass this class and the students who ended up with an F in my course didn't study, didn't show up, just stopped doing assignments or studying or working through things for whatever reason. And this was a pretty brutal semester of data. So you can imagine on a normal semester, that level of Fs is actually even lower. Now, another thing I really wanna talk about as you kind of approach my class is understanding that it doesn't just look like good studying and good quizzing habits that get you through college. You really need to have a system around you that allows you to succeed in a science major. Now, that might look like really investing in your education. That might look like really finding a great internship or a great job that can sustain you through college, especially if you're having to pay your way through. It might look like finding good friends, good roommates, good college connections with different students that help you create this community of success. And then additionally here at the College of Ag, we have a couple additional services that are really gonna be able to help you get through our program. So things like the Student Success Office, they are amazing, amazing student support network. And then also your faculty mentor. Every student in the College of Ag has a faculty mentor, and we're really here to get you through college, to make sure that you're succeeding, that you leave our program with an understanding of where you're headed, what your degree is gonna be used for, and then just the day-to-day -day stuff of getting you through classes and things like that. So really take some time this semester to understand what is my network and how am I gonna build it so that I can continue to succeed, not only in Mrs. Moore's class, but also down the line. 
And then last but not least, and I'm going to post this video on our YouTube playlist for this week because it's pretty funny. So take a second to watch it if you, you want a little bit of a, a humor in your life. But the other thing that's really important to understand is that I offer office hours every single week. And those are posted both on my syllabus as well as online. And I call these my free tutoring and life coaching hours because sometimes office hours sound really intense and very scheduled and oh gosh, but really what these are, are there's, it's time that I take out of my schedule every single week to offer help on content, to work through problems if you're having it in class or if there's something going on that you need to chat about that's really hurting your academic process. Um, any of those kinds of things um, are really what I'm here for. And so if you're needing help, if you're needing to just chat with someone and get some support, um, that's really what I'm here for, guys. Office hours just sounds like this big, scary word, but really it's time that I put aside to be there um, and be available if you need something for my course. 